Greetings, dear fans of everything that flies. Sky is here. Yeah, nothing smarter I've invented for the nickname. Today I'm introducing the first marathon on the channel. The marathon of the Airbus planes. On these planes we usually fly on a business, vacations and so on. Are you interested on what devices we're riding from country to country, from continent to continent? Then let's start. And we're not starting with the planes. Yes, I've got here a whole series about A300, A310, 320, 330, 340, 350 and of course enormous A380. But all of them have one name in common – Airbus. They're all Airbus, and I've decided it would be logical first to tell a story of the company manufacturer itself. Let's make a little trip to France. There is a little town, called Bonniac, on southwest of the Fifth Republic. A small comfortable commune with good people and old churches. There are nearly 22,000 people living here. A couple colleges, local family businesses that provide their owners enough money for a little Citroëns and good wine. And yes, the main office of Airbus is here too. One of the biggest aerospace corporations in the world, with 65 billion euro margin and over 136,000 employees scattered around the planet. I must say that there are actually two Airbuses. The first is Airbus SAS, manufacturer of our story's main heroes. The second, Airbus Group, is a huge concern, which was earlier called EADS. European Aeronautic Defense in Space. Also, the first is a core for the second. In addition to civilian aircrafts, the bigger concern also includes helicopter manufacturing, defense system development and other interesting things. But we'll get to them some other time. Ok, let's start from the beginning. It's 1960s. Alexei Leonov flies, Neil Armstrong walks, Martin Luther King dreams and the Beatles sings. There is a mix of sexual revolution and the threat of nuclear apocalypse. So, normal, civilized life. At that time, all European countries and aircraft manufacturing companies realized two simple truths. First, always depending on US import is futile. Creation of their own modern competitive civilian aircrafts is necessary. Second, there's no one country or company that can compete with US and USSR airspace industries. In 1965, at the Paris Air Show, the largest aviation manufacturers gathered to discuss an idea of creating a joint European airplane. By that time, British Hawker Siddeley and French Brugette were already developing a similar aircraft, conditionally named Airbus. In 1966, they were joined by Sad Aviation and Aerospatiale, as well as the German Arbeitsgemeinschaft, a company with very complicated name. So later it was called Deutsche Airbus. Apparently I'm not the only one having trouble with this. In the same year the governments of France, Germany and the United Kingdom concluded an agreement to develop a new project jointly. There were a lot of arguments. The British wanted to be in control, the Germans wanted to have most of production facilities. The French threatened to withdraw from the project because they were actively working on the famous Concorde supersonic plane. And the SO were already developing a 160-seat Merkur airplane independently. In result, they did not go away, and the time showed that was the right choice. Concorde became a legend, but brought only losses. The Merkur was released in a number of proud 12 jets. But they've quarreled anyway. In 1969, the United Kingdom government, referring to a small number of orders for this future plane named A300, decided to withdraw. Kind of an industrial Brexit. The Germans, not losing any time, bought their share and got 50% of the new business. Oh, a big happy European family. Finally, happy birthday! On December 18, 1970, the Airbus industry was created. The French Aerospatial and German Deutsche Airbus were equal shareholders of a new concern. Moreover, the name Airbus was not chosen immediately because at that time it was more of a slang word. You know, the flying bus. Now, of course, everyone dreams to fly on this bus. The roles in production had been distributed according to this scheme. Aerospatial and Deutsche Airbus had 36.5% of all works. 
another 20% remained for Hockey Siddeley, which had to work very hard to stay in the project after the denial of British government. Another 7% was taken by Fokker. In 1971, Spanish CASA Corporation joined the new project. They managed to buy out nearly 4% share. In 1977, British Aerospace merged the Hawker Siddeley and replaced it in Airbus. So, Airbus A300, the first aircraft developed by the new aviation concern. Back in 1967, it was decided to create a fairly large wide-body aircraft, accommodating nearly 300 passengers and equipped with just two engines. I should note that at the time the world was dominated by three or four engine airplanes, and creation of a large aircraft with just two engines seemed extreme, but the risk was justified. Creating a not bad airplane was not enough, Airbus had to prove itself. France was developing the cockpit, control systems and some fuselage elements. Britain took on the creation of the wing. Hawker Siddeley were good at it. Germany built most of the fuselage as well as some elements of the wing mechanization. Spain developed the horizontal tail. The engines, that was supposed to take all of it off the ground, became a task for Rolls-Royce. The development process was not easy, but this is another story, which I will tell in a special A300 video. Eventually, in 1972, the first Airbus A300 made its maiden flight and the new plane became very successful. The risk with two engines paid off. A300 was much more economically efficient than conventional three-engine competitors. Airbus A300 became a first spark and the beginning of the largest aerospace concern, which later released six more civilian airplanes. So what now? It's 2017. Alexei Leonov is an old friendly guy, Donald Trump is tweeting, Eminem's rapping, the world around is a mixture of a crazy revolution and the threat of a zombie apocalypse. So, normal, civilized life. Airbus SAS produces four models of commercial airplanes. The main factory is located in Toulouse, near the small country town of Blagnac. In addition, the concern has many production plants all over the Europe, as well as in the US, India and China. In 2016, Airbus produced 688 aircrafts. Not bad for the company, which was once considered a political chop shop. That's the end of our today's story and the beginning of the marathon. Subscribe to the channel and watch other videos. Fast flights and soft landings to you.